Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the five phases of hacking or five phases of penetration testing. So if you guys are familiar with these, awesome. If not, keep watching to the end and learn a little something today. If you guys are new to the channel, you know the deal. Like, subscribe, and share. And if you're returning, let's have some fun. So before I actually jump onto my desktop and show you guys the different stuff, so the five phases, the first one is reconnaissance, right? You always want to do your recon. If it's an internal, external, whatever kind of assessment you're doing, you want to know more information about the client or the target. The next thing is scanning, right? Before we start, you know, scanning, we need to have some reconnaissance. So that's the next one, scanning. And then once we start scanning, then we can try to gain some access to those targets, right? Maybe with an RCE, whatever way, social engineering, harvest credentials, whatever we want to do, right? And we'll get into that shortly. And then once we have access, what's the next thing? It's maintaining that access, right? That's the fourth phase, maintaining access. And number five is clearing tracks. You want to cover your tracks. You want to seem like you've never been there before. And yeah, that's pretty much the five phases in a nutshell. So let's actually go to my desktop and we can see a little more in depth. Let's check that out. All right. So as you guys can see here, so the phases of hacking, right? Let's try to make this a little larger for you guys. So here are the main, fa the, the five phases, like I was saying. So obviously you can, you know, it's best to follow these things in order, but it's not necessary. You know, you can start doing whatever you want to do, but I think uh, following these steps will give you a little more success, right? I just went to Google and I just Googled it really quick and I came up with this, you know, gray campus. So I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't read it all, all the way through, but you can go to gray campus to find this link and uh, open campus and then ethical hacking and phases of hacking. All right, so reconnaissance. What is recon? You know, what kind of reconnaissance can we do? We can do active and passive reconnaissance. So this is the first step of any hacking, right? If you're doing a hack the box, try hack me, a real pen test or whatever, you have to do your reconnaissance. You know, look them up on Google, look them up on their website, look them up on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever kind of uh, information you want to start going after. And this is also known as footprinting and information gathering whatever you want to call it. And then, so once we gather all the information about the target, right? Now we can start saying, okay, the target is a network, the target is a host, you know, people involved, whatever we want to do. So we can collect as many, collect as much information as we can from these three groups. And obviously the way you do these is, you know, whole bunch, this is a whole nother animal, right? If you understand or know the network that you're working with, they'll give you an IP scheme, which is in scope that you can scan with hosts that you can and cannot scan and whatever the people involved. Maybe there's only two people in the whole organizations that know that you're going to do a red team or a pen test or whatever you want to do. And then, you know, make sure those people are involved. <clears throat> so, like I said, there's two types of footprinting. There's active which this is directly interacting with the target to gain information about the target, right? Using Nmap tools or whatever kind of other tools you want to do to scan the target. Passive is trying to collect information about the target without directly accessing them. So say, for example, you can go like this, social media, public websites, LinkedIn, all those things that we're not really interacting with Joe Blow or John Doe, whoever, but we're able to gather some information about them on the internet. Okay. So phase number two is scanning, right? So what is this? There's a couple types of scans, right? We have port scanning. We can do Nmap. Say, for example, we want to scan for port 26. And I'm saying that because I did that recently. Uh, or port 25 or port 22, 21, port 80, 443, whatever we want to scan for, we can go ahead and use a tool like Nmap or there's many other tools out there. This is not a tool video. But um, this, uh, this phase involves scanning the the target to gain information about open ports, live systems, and various services that it's running on that host. Okay, a vulnerability scan. Say, for example, like Rapid7, Qualys, OpenVos, whatever we want to do, oh, whichever tool we want to use, excuse me, to check if that system is vulnerable, susceptible to any exploits or whatever. 
and you can use a vulnerability scanner for that. <clears throat> Next one is network mapping. Finding the topology of the network, routers, firewalls, servers, if there's any. And then we can draw a network diagram. So say for an example, you were able to compromise a switch, a Cisco switch. And now we can do, for an example, show CDP neighbors, which is the Cisco discovery protocol. Now we can discover the network that's connected to it. Maybe it's uplinked to a trunk port or it's connected to another switch. And then we can get, just gather the information, as much information as we can while we're scanning for this information. A lot of information, information, information. All right, so step number three or phase number three is gaining access. So this is where the attacker breaks into the system, right, or the network using various tools and methods. Sometimes phishing is probably the most successful way to compromise a lot of users, right? Social engineering. But once we're able to harvest those credentials or whatever way we're getting into the system, we're in the system now, right? Now, you know, he or she or whomever's trying to log into these systems, after we get into the system, we can have, you know, we can increase the privileges. This is also known as privesque or privilege escalation. <clears throat> excuse me, to root or an administrator account. So we can have that level to install applications to modify data or hide data or whatever we want to do, right? Is if we have King Kong rights on your system, we can do a lot of damage, you know? So make sure your AD or whatever infrastructure or Linux servers are all patched up to date. Um, you know, you do your own scanning to like lower the attack surface or the attack vector from gaining access, right? And the next one is, okay, now we have access, what do you wanna do next? Maintain that access, right? We wanna be able to maintain access. So what does this mean? So this means the hacker may just, like I said, hack into the system and show that it's vulnerable or can actually use some kind of ways to maintain or use persistence to, you know, to connect to it you know, later or whatever, whatever the case may be, right? So. Uh, I lost my, I lost what I was, I was thinking out loud and I was trying to read, but um, yeah, so this can be done using Trojans, root kits, remote access Trojans, um, and other different kind of malware files. And this aims to maintain access to the system. So for example, maybe it, you know, I can install something and I can, you know, I can try to remotely access it later on or whatever. That's maintaining access. Okay. Hopefully that was clear. I know my mind is a little all over the place. And the fifth one here is clearing your tracks. So now we're done with the pen test or whatever we're doing. And now we don't want to have any track. We want to try to be anonymous. And, you know, like it says, no theft or no thief wants to get caught, right? So in, excuse me, an intelligent hacker always clears its, all its evidence. What does this mean? So say, for example, I'm on a Windows system. I compromise the Windows system. Now, I uploaded maybe a Trojan, maybe we use, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, something to create a piece of malware, right? I, I forget, I, I just lost my train of thought, but create a piece of malware, right? Now we can install this, whatever we're using, but make sure we can delete that out of whatever file that we uploaded this to, even if it's like Mimikatz or whatever we're doing to dump hashes, maybe we're running other, diff other tools on the system to utilize, to do whatever we're trying to do. Make sure we go back in there and delete that because that's super critical, right? So this is involved modifying, corrupting, and deleting the values, uh, all the, pretty much all the logs, right? We wanna modify the registry values and uninstalling, uninstalling all applications and deleting all the folders that, you know, the pen tester or the hacker has created. So pretty much just clear your tracks. You know, if I went into your house and I stepped in oil, uh, hopefully uh, you're not going to clear your tracks because you're probably going to stain the sh stain the floor, or whatever. But you know what I mean. Like if, say, for example, I say, hey, like when you guys come in from the pool, dry your feet at the door so you don't leave tracks, right? So what do they do? Kids don't listen. They'll jump in the pool, come in because they want a drink or a snack. They'll run right into the house, and if it's Three kids, you can see who's the smallest one, for example, look at the little feet print. Okay. And the only way the little one will get away with it 
if I was away from them, is wipe them up, right? Like, oh, snap, I, I made a mess. So let me just wipe the, my tracks and let me go outside. And I'll never know they're there. Hopefully that analogy makes sense. But yeah, that's clearing tracks. So that pretty much concludes this video. So thank you so much for viewing. And if you know, you know, you know the deal. Please like, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. And if you have any recommendations of any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below. This was an actual video that someone said, can you explain the five phases of hacking? Hopefully it's been informative for you, the one that asked me for it, and for whoever else is, you know, viewing this. So thank you so much and have an awesome day, folks.